Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at tangents and normals, dy dx notation. But before we do that, let's do some recap questions. So you already know how to differentiate. So let's have a look at question A and B. I'll get you to pause the video, have a go with differentiating these questions, uh, these functions, and then let's um, check out answers. Okay, so question A. Uh, we've got y is equal to negative 4x to the power 9 plus 3x to the power 5 plus 1. So when we differentiate this, because this says y, we're going to use y dash. So that equals to negative 36, bring down a 9. So negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. x to the power of 8, we need to reduce the power by 1. 5 times 3 is 15. x to the power of 4, because we need to reduce the power by 1, and then the constant just disappears. So that's it, that's our first derivative, negative 36 x to the power of 8 plus 15 x to the power of 4. Question B, we've got um, f of x is equal to 11 x to the negative 4 minus 3 x to the power of negative 1. Okay, so when we differentiate this, I'm going to use f dash of x. Okay, because this is f of x, I'm going to use f dash of x. So we bring this down, multiply the 2. 11 times negative 4 is negative 44. x to the power of, now we need to reduce that by 1. So minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5, so just be careful with that. Take the power, multiply it by the minus 3, becomes positive 3. x to the power of, reduce the power by 1. Minus 1 minus 1 is actually minus 2. Now, if we want to clean this up and write it without any negative indices, we can. So that leaves us with negative 44 in the numerator, x to the power of positive 5 and there's in the denominator, plus 3 in the numerator, x to the power of positive 2 in the denominator. Okay, so today, as I said uh, at the beginning of this video, we're going to be looking at tangents and normals dy dx notation. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to understand what dy dx means, use dy dx notation to find derivatives and solve problems, use derivatives to find the equation of a tangent or normal, find second and third derivatives. So let's have a look at the first part. What does dy dx mean? So dy dx is exactly the same as f dash of x, okay, it just means the first derivative. It's just another way of writing the gradient function. So we are differentiating y, d, differenti differentiating y with respect to x. So if we let delta y be the small change in y resulting from a small change delta x and x, then dy dx is the limit as delta x approaches 0 of delta y over delta x. When delta x is small, the secant pq is almost the same as the tangent at p, and the derivative is the limit of delta y over delta x as q gets as close as we like to p, that is, as delta x approaches 0. Now you would have you should have already done this when we were looking at differentiating with uh, uh, by using first principles. So you should be able to understand the purpose um, and un understand how limits work. Okay, we're going to use dy dx notation to find derivatives and solve problems. So differentiate y equals 4 minus x squared. So let's do that over here. If y is equal to 4 minus x squared, we're just going to use dy dx notation. So instead of writing y dash, which we could, we're just going to write dy dx instead. So when we differentiate this, the uh, constant that disappears, when we bring down the power, becomes minus 2x. Okay, reduce the power by 1. We can now find the gradient because this is the gradient function. Okay, it tells us what the gradient is at any point along the along the curve. 
So find the gradient of the tangent at the point P minus 1, 3 on the curve. So that tells us that x is minus 1. So when x is equal to minus 1, the gradient of the tangent is equal to minus 2 times minus 1. Now, where did I get that from? I got it from here. Minus 2 times minus 1. Okay, that tells us what the gradient of the tangent is, which is positive 2. Okay, so it's going to be sloping up. Find a point on the curve where the gradient of the tangent is 6. So basically what we're doing is we want to know what x is equal to when the gradient of the tangent is 6. So when this is equal to 6. Oh, that makes it nice and easy. We just divide by negative 2. But that's not the point, right? That's just the x-coordinate. We need the y-coordinate as well. So when x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to, we're going to sub this negative 3 back into the original function to tell us what y is. We do not sub it back into that because that's not y, that's dy dx. Okay, we want it to be what y is equal to. So y is equal to 4 minus negative 3 squared, which is negative 5. So it's at negative 3, negative 5. Okay. Find the gradient and angle of inclination of the tangent to y equals x plus y null squared at a 0 comma 1. So if we want to find uh, the gradient, we need to, whenever we want to find a gradient, we need to differentiate to get the gradient function. So if y is equal to x plus 1 all squared, I'm just going to expand this out. This is a perfect square. Okay, because that makes it easier for us to uh, differentiate. So dy dx is equal to 2x plus 2. So that's the gradient function. We know that x is 0 at this point, a. So when x is 0, the gradient of the tangent is going to be 2 times 0 plus 2. Okay, I'm just going to sub in 0 into the gradient function. And that equals to 2. So we want to find the angle of inclination. Just to do that over here. Angle of inclination. In our very first uh, lesson, we said that the gradient is actually equal to the tangent because it's just um, opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of the angle is going to equal to 2 because that's what we worked out. So the angle therefore has to be arctan or inverse tan of 2. If we put that in our calculator. We get 63. Point four degrees. That's to one dp. All right, part B. We want to find the gradient and angle of inclination of the normal at A. Now the normal is pretty much the line that's perpendicular to the tangent. So if the gradient of the tangent is two, that from what we worked out in part A, then the gradient of the normal has to be the negative reciprocal of that. So we're going to flip it, and then we're going to change the sign. So we found the gradient. All we need to do now is find the angle of inclination. So angle of inclination. We've got tan of alpha is equal to negative half. So alpha is equal to inverse tan or arc tan, but I'm not going to do negative half. I'm going to do positive half. That negative here just tells me which quadrant it's in. So all stations to central, where is tan negative? Here and here. 
However, we only need, whenever we're talking about angle of inclination, we never need to worry about the bottom two. Okay, we don't need to worry about these two. So really, we need this angle here. When we put inverse tan of half, it's going to give us this one over here. But alpha is that. So inverse tan of half is 26.6 degrees. So that's theta. Maybe we'll do this. Theta is equal to that. So the angle of inclination is 180 minus the 26.6, 153.4. Um, in exam, the, the question might ask you to put it in, uh, to round it to the nearest minute. So just press that degrees, minutes, seconds button. So that's 153.26. And same with the other one. We've got 63 degrees, 26 minutes. All right, so let's sketch this. Sorry, there's not much space here. I'm just gonna go over here. Okay, we wanna sketch X plus one all squared, that's a concave up parabola. It's minus one is the turning point. When x is zero, y is one. Okay, so here's a, right? It says zero, one. So the tangent at that, I'm just draw it in like that. That's our tangent. And our normal is at a 90 degree angle. That's our normal. Okay, so what we found is that the gradient of the tangent, the gradient of this is two, and the gradient of the normal is negative half. Okay, it's negative because it's sloping down. We can also see that the angle of inclination for the tangent, that's this bit here, that that angle is the 63 degrees 26 minutes. And the angle for the normal, the angle of inclination for the normal is that. And that is 153 degrees and 26 minutes. Okay, uh, let's move on to the third part of this lesson, finding equations of tangents and normals. So a normal is the line that's perpendicular to the tangent. So if the gradient of a tangent is 3 quarters, the gradient of the normal is negative 4 over 3. We sort of did that already in the previous question. So let's find the equations of the tangents to y equals x squared plus x plus 1 at these two points, p1, 3 and q minus 1, 1. So because we want the equations of the tangents, we need to differentiate because we need the gradients. So when we differentiate this, we get dy dx is equal to 2x plus 1. Okay, bring down the 2, bring down the 1, 2x plus 1. So we want the gradients of the tangents only. We don't need to work out the gradients of the, of the normals. So when x is equal to 1, that's for this one. Let's just label this x1, y1, and this one x1, y1. Then the gradient of the tangent is equal to 2 lots of 1 plus 1, which is 3. Okay, we just subbed it into the gradient function. So 
Um, let's let's just work out the equation of, of the tangent at p for now. So equation of tangent at p. We know that the formula we use the point gradient formula whenever we want to work out the gradient uh, the, the equation of a straight line, which is y minus y one is equal to m bracket x minus x one. So here we have y minus y1, which is 3, is equal to the gradient 3, which was what we've worked out here, bracket x minus x1, which is 1. What we're going to do is we're going to um, expand this brackets, 3x minus 3, and then we'll just add 3 to both sides, so y is equal to 3x. Okay, so that's our equation of the tangent at p. What about at q? Well, when x is equal to negative 1, because that's what x is equal to at q, the gradient of the tangent is going to be 2 lots of negative 1 plus 1. Again, I just substitute it into that the gradient function. That gives us 2 times minus 1 plus 1, which is negative 1. And so now the t equation of the tan of tangent at q y minus y1 is equal to m bracket x minus x1. This becomes a plus 1 because minus minus 1 is positive. So y minus 1 is equal to negative x minus 1. So y is equal to negative x. At what point do the tangents intersect? So what we need to do, we need to know, we need to remember that when two lines intersect each other, um, the equations of those lines are equal to each other. So we have y equals 3x, and we have y equals negative x. So y is equal to 3x, we can just replace that with 3x. and make it equal to negative x. So we've got 4x is equal to 0, so x is equal to 0. That's the x coordinate of the point where they intersect. We need to work out the y coordinate. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to, we're going to sub 0 in into any one of these two. I'm just going to do 3 lots of 0, which is 0. Therefore, they intersect at 0, 0. Alright, question 2. Find the equation of the tangent to y equals x cubed at a 1, 1. So we need to work out the gradient by first differentiating. So we have dy dx is equal to 3x squared at x is equal to 1. The gradient of the tangent is going to equal to 3 times 1 squared or 3. So the equation of the tangent is y minus y1 is equal to m bracket x minus x1. Okay, so here's our x1, y1. Here's our m. So y minus 1 is equal to 3x minus 3. y is equal to 3x minus 2. Question B. Find the equation of the normal to the curve at a, 1, 1. So we've already worked out the equation of the tangent. So the equation, if, sorry, the gradient of the tangent. If the gradient of the tangent is 3, the gradient of the normal is the negative reciprocal. So I'm going to flip it, change the sign. So the equation of the normal is 
y minus y1 is equal to m bracket x minus x1. So y minus 1 is equal to negative 1 third x plus 1 third. So y is equal to negative 1 third x plus 4 and 3. Find the coordinates of the y-intercepts t and n of the tangent and normal. So to find the y-intercepts, we need to let x equal to 0. So y-intercept of tangent, we need to let x equal to 0. 3 times 0 minus 2 which is minus 2. So the coordinates are 0, minus 2. And a y-intercept of the normal, we need to let x equal to 0, y equals negative 1 third times 0, plus 4 over 3, is 4 over 3. So the coordinates are 0, 4 over 3. Okay, question D. Sketch the situation and find the area of triangle A N T. Okay, so we have uh, the y-intercept of the tangent is at minus 2. Let's just call this That's our y-intercept. The y-intercept of the normal is at positive 4 over 3. So let's, let's say that's 4 over 3. Okay, and let's just draw these, uh, let's just draw these lines. So we've got y equals 3x minus 2. That's going to go through here. Okay, so I know it's got a gradient of 3. So for every uh, 1 we go across, we need to go 3 up. So I went 1 across, 3 up. For the other one, we've got negative 1 third x plus 4 over 3. I've already got my two points. I can technically, I can just draw my normal here. Okay. And we want to find the area of triangle A and T. So let me just write this one in here. That's the normal. This one's the tangent. And this is point. Right, let's point A, 1, 1. So we're finding the area of this triangle here. Okay, area is equal to half base times height. The base is this length, which is 4 over 3 plus 2, or um, 3 and a third times the height. The height is here, the perpendicular height, which is 1. So we have half times 3 and 1 third, 3 and 1 third times 1 which is 5 over 3 square units. Okay, let's have a look at the very last part of today's lesson, which is uh, finding second and third derivatives. So dy dx, or f dash of x, is the first derivative. The 2y dx squared, or f double dash of x, is the second derivative. So if we want to find a third derivative, 
it's just going to be d 3y dx cubed or f triple dash of x. Now sometimes you might see um, f2 of x, sorry, f3 for this one. For the second derivative, you could see f2 of x. But that's pretty uncommon. All right, so we're gonna find the first, second, and third derivatives of the function y equals five x to the power seven minus eight x to the power five plus two x squared. So y dash, actually let's use dy dx. dy dx is equal to 35 x to the power six minus 40 x to the power four plus four x. That's the first derivative. Second derivative, d2y dx squared. Now we're differentiating this. So we need to bring down this power. 6 times 35 is 210. So we've got 210 x to the power 5 minus 40 times 4 is 160 x cubed plus 4. Okay. Power of 1, 4 times 1 is 4, and then the x disappears because when we reduce the power of 1 to 0, x to the power of 0 is just 1. Okay, and the third derivative, let's do that over here, d3y dx cubed is equal to 210 times 5, 1050, x to the power of 4 minus 160 times 3, 480, x squared, and then that constant of 4 disappears. Okay, so we just differentiated the second derivative. That's how we get our third. All right, that's it for this video. Um, homework is exercise 80, questions 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, and 9 to 12. Thanks.